In this video, we'll be using zero product property to solve equations. But first, let's look at some equations that will help kind of guide us in learning about what zero product property is. 5x equals zero. Simple equation to solve. If 5 times x equals zero, that means x has to be zero. Let's try another one. So in this equation, what we often do is just distribute the 5 like that. So we get 5x minus 10 equals 0. Add 10 to both sides, and we're left with 5x equals 10. Divide both sides by 5, and x equals 2. Now let's look at this equation one more time. What if instead of distributing, I notice that the x minus 2 part is kind of like the x in the first equation. So in the first equation, I know 5 times x equals 0. x is obviously 0. But if instead of distributing, I just realized it's 5 times the parentheses part, that would mean that the parentheses part has to equal 0. And that is basically what zero product property does. Add 2 to both sides, and we get the same answer as we did in the middle equation. We just did it a different way. Let's go ahead and take a look at how zero product property can be defined. If xy equals zero, then x equals zero, or y equals zero, or both x and y equals zero. Those are the only options that will make that equation true. Also, zero product property, it'll work no matter how many variables are being multiplied together. So if you actually had x times y times z equals 0, then that would mean x equals 0, or y equals 0, or z equals 0, or any combination of the three have to equal 0. Now that we know what it is, let's go ahead and put it to use. So the first equation, we got x times x plus 4 equals 0. So to use zero product property, we know that either x equals zero and or x plus four equals zero. And then we just go ahead and solve that x plus four equals zero, move the positive four to the other side, and we get x equals negative four. So there's your answers for that, x equals zero, x equals negative four. Let's try the next one. We would know from this equation that either x minus 8 equals 0, and or x plus 7 equals 0. Solve the one on the left, move the negative 8 to the other side, and you get x equals 8. Move the positive 7 to the other side, and you get x equals negative 7. Commonly, these questions are given not in the factored form, but in standard form. In which case, you would need to factor first and then use zero product property to solve. You just need to take a look at one of my factoring videos to see how you would actually get it into this factored form. One of the most common uses we have for zero product property would be to find the x-intercepts for an equation. Because when you want to find the x-intercept, you let y equal zero. So if we look at our first problem, we just add a quick, simple step of letting y equal 0. Now we're ready to go ahead and say that x minus 12 equals 0, or x plus 6 equals 0. Now we can go ahead and move that negative 12 to the right side, where it becomes positive 12. The positive 6 would move to the right side and become negative 6. And since we are trying to solve for the x-intercepts, we should go ahead and write our x-intercepts as 12, 0, and negative 6, 0. Let's take a look at the second one. Same first step, we go ahead and rewrite the equation and let y equal 0. Notice that the 5 in front, that's a constant value. That's always a 5. It's never going to become a 0. So we can just ignore it when we write our next line and let 2x minus 9 equals 0, and 3x plus 1 equals 0. Let's solve the one on the left. Move the negative 9 to the right side and becomes positive 9. And then you just need to divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 9 halves. 
Now, since this is an x-intercept, if you were trying to locate this on the graph, I think you're better off calling this four and a half, zero. But you can write it any way you want. You can do the improper fraction, a mixed number. You could even make it a decimal. Let's go ahead and solve for the other one. Move the positive one to the other side, and it becomes negative one. And then when we divide both sides by three, we get x equals negative one-third. Go ahead and write it as our x-intercept, negative one-third, zero. All right, it's your turn to give it a try. Go ahead and pause the video and solve these two problems. All right, let's take a look at the answer. So first step is to let that y become a zero because you solve for x-intercepts by letting y equal zero. Now we can go ahead and write that either x plus 17 equals zero or x minus three equals zero. Actually, since these are graphs, this would be x plus 17 equals zero and x minus three will equal zero because the graph will definitely have both x-intercepts. Let's solve the one on the left, move the positive 17 to the right side, and we get x equals negative 17, which would give us an x-intercept of negative 17, 0. Move the negative 3 to the right side, and we get x equals 3, which gives us an x-intercept of 3, 0. All right, second one. Remember, f of x, same thing as y, pretty much, um, just different notation. So we're going to let f of x equal 0 on this one. Remember that 2 is a constant value. You do not need to use it when you're doing zero product property. The 2 will never equal 0. But the 4x plus 13 equals 0, and the 5x minus 7 equals 0. Go ahead and solve the 1 on the left. Move the positive 13 over and get negative 13, and divide by 4 to get negative 13 fourths. Now remember, if I actually want to graph this or kind of know where it is on the graph, I'm going to go ahead and call that negative 13 fourths, negative 3.250. Yeah, I used a decimal this time. It doesn't matter what you use, improper fraction, mixed number, or a decimal. On to the next one. Move the negative 7 to the right side. It becomes positive. Divide both sides by 5. And you get x equals 7 fifths, which I'll just rewrite as 1 and 2 fifths, 0. And that will do it or using zero product property to solve equations.